Hello and welcome to the first video of the FP3 chapter Matrices. On the screen a quick question to review the work on matrices from FP1. Calculate the product AB. Pause the video now and give this a go if you've got time. So to multiply A and B we need to make sure that we've got the same number of columns as rows. Here we've got two columns and here we've got two rows so we're okay. And remember the order is very important. So A, B in the question, we've got to make sure A is on the left, B is on the right. So we do first row times first column, so we've got minus 3 and minus 4, that gives us minus 7. And then there isn't a second column here, so we go into second row, first column. So minus 9 plus 8 gives us minus 1. And that is our answer matrix. Is the product B times A the same? The answer I hope you know is no. In this case it's very easy to see that because if we try and do it the other way around we can't even do this. We won't get an answer because we don't have the number of columns here equaling the number of rows here. We've got two rows but only one column. So when you try and do minus three times one you don't have another element here to multiply by three. So this is undefined. So an important thing to remember from your previous work is that in general AB is not the same as BA in matrix multiplication. It is not commutative. We'll come back to that in this video. Um, we'll also see an example where it happens to be equal but in general it's not. So this is an overview of the chapter. It goes quite deep into certain areas like eigenvalues and eigenvectors, but for the first few videos it's very systematic, follow the process, get the answer. We go into the application towards the end of the chapter. So this video is transposing a 3 by 3 matrix. Now the terminology we're going to use is from P1, so a quick review here of some of the specific terminology. A square matrix has the same number of rows as columns, and you can write that as an n by n matrix. The zero matrix is a matrix full of zeros. The identity matrix has ones on the leading diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And you've probably used these in two dimensions before. In three dimensions, these are here. And one of the key points or characteristics of the identity matrix is that it has no effect when you multiply a matrix by this. So here is an example where A times I is equal to I times A, although that's not a general truth about matrix multiplication. In this case it is true, and both of those are equal to A. So I hope you're familiar with these ideas from FP1. The first new thing for FP3 is to transpose a matrix. And to do this, it's very simple. You simply switch the rows and the columns. So the first row here becomes the first column in your transposed matrix. And the second row becomes the second column, and the third row becomes the third column. Or if you want to do it the other way around, the first column becomes the first row, the second column becomes the second row either way in this case, you end up with this. And we denote that by putting a little superscript T on the matrix. So I'm going to do these two examples, B and C. Here we've got the transpose of B. My first column is 3 and minus 2, so that becomes my first row, 3 and minus 2. The second column, minus 6, 4, becomes the second row, minus 6, 4. And there is the transpose of B. A more general 3 by 3 matrix, if I want to transpose this, 
the first row a b c becomes the first column a b c the second row d e f becomes the second column and the third row g h i becomes the third column and you can imagine this as a reflection of sorts because if you put a line of reflection down the middle here and you leave all of these elements where they are you can then reflect here d and b switch places g and c switch places and h and f switch places that's not always the best way of thinking about it because it's a little bit hard to do it over here although you can still kind of see it where three and two switch places the one and four stay where they are and the five and the blank space here five and a blank space here six empty space six empty space you can kind of see it still sort of works but i wouldn't suggest using that as your main idea of this so here is a three by three matrix i'm going to quickly transpose it so we've got four two minus five from the first column and from the second column two seven one and the third column minus five one nine and you can see here in this case this is the same matrix exactly the same and this then is said to be symmetric and that's why i introduced the idea of a little line down here it's a little bit more helpful on these ones because you can see here if you were to reflect you'd get the same answer this is a line of symmetry now if you ignore the four seven and nine so if a is equal to its own transpose then the matrix is called a symmetric matrix and i hope it's obvious that in order for this to happen it has to be a square matrix if you have a different number of rows and columns then obviously you can't transpose that and get the same thing that you started with a couple of quick examples to look at some standard results if a is this find a transpose times a and a times a transpose so before i do that i will need to know what is a transpose and that is a one zero two minus one zero three now i can multiply these and see what the results are so a transpose times a and we've got one times one two times two so that's a five one times zero minus two and zero so we've got minus two uh, minus two again and zero one and nine gives me ten there we have our first answer for a transpose times a Let's do a times a transpose in white And see what we get so we get a one times zero so then we get a two and then a zero two and a five and minus three and zero minus three and at the end a nine okay that's clearly very different and that should not be a surprise because when we interchange the order of these two we end up with a different matrix order this is a two by two and this is three by three based on the slightly different dimensions of these matrices so in general as with multiplication in general with matrices these two things are not going to be the same if you switch the order however it is worth noting that both of the results here give you symmetric matrices for your answers 
So in general, matrix multiplication is not commutative. So A times its own transpose is not usually equal to the transpose of A times A. However, you will always get a symmetric matrix if you multiply a matrix by its own transpose. OK, another result to finish with. Find A, B transpose and B transpose, A transpose. So we're going to need to transpose both of these and the multiplication A, B. So I'm just going to find A, B first and then we'll transpose it. And I'll just do that by looking at these in the question. So 3, 0, 4 gives me a 7 for the first element might take me a little bit of time here, so if you want to fast forward this bit, feel free. 12 and a 2 is a 14. And then I'm on to the second row, first column. So at minus 2, 0, 0. Minus 2, so already I can see that this is not a symmetric matrix. A 0, 2, 0. Minus 8. Zero, zero. Third row, 1 and an 8 is a 9, 0 minus 4 and 4, that gives me an 8. There we go. Okay, transposing this is going to be easier. So we've got 7 minus 2, 9, 0, 2 minus 4, 14 minus 8 and 8. Then I need to transpose A and B separately and multiply my answers with the transpose of B on the left. So if I transpose B and write that here, that's a 1, 0, 4, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 0, 1. And then Transpose of A, I'll write here. And then I have to multiply them. So I get 3 and a 4, 7, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 8. That's a 9, and you can probably see already where this is going. 0, 0, 0. 0, 2, 0, minus 4, 0, and then the third row, 12 plus 0 plus 2, 14, minus 8, and 4 plus 4, 8. And hopefully you've realised that this answer and this answer are the same matrix. So here's a nice little result. If you can do the multiplication A times B, because remember, this might not always be possible, depending on the matrices A and B, but if you can do that and transpose it, then the transpose of B times the transpose of A will give you the same answer. So there's a nice little result to remember at the bottom. And that should be enough for you to have a go at the questions from exercise 6A in the textbook. And maybe I'll see you in the next video.